Hi, I'm Robert Joseph. Thank you for stopping by today. This is the Robert Joseph Sewing Channel, which hosts Sew It Like a Man Sewing Pattern Tutorials. So I've had a lot of questions about what types of machines that I use and why I use them. So these two machines sitting in front of me are actually the two machines that I use in the videos most commonly. So um, before I get too involved in talking about both the machines and other types of machines, I want to say that I do not get sponsored by any of these companies. I'm not paid by any of these companies. These are my opinion and my opinion only. So um, the first machine that I want to actually talk about is the most important machine when you're sewing with knits, and that is a serger. In the fashion industry, fashion production, they're called overlock machines, and I believe also in Europe they're called overlock machines. So um, if I say serger or overlock, it, I just mean it's an interchangeable word that means the same thing. Now this machine is, um, I've had this machine for a long time. Um, a friend of mine, Tondi, thank you very much. She's a brilliant jewelry designer. She gave this to me in about, I think it was 2004, 2005 when um, she moved to Africa. So um, she gave this to me because I was doing some work with her and um, she couldn't take it with her at the time. And so I've had this machine and it's been through all of my businesses that I've um, really ever had as far as producing accessories or apparel for retail. So I've used this machine for all of the samples. Um, so this is a double needle four thread serger and of course it's a brother brand and I guess maybe I'm partial to brother I don't know why um, you know everybody has their own feel for what brand they use and for some reason brothers actually been pretty good for me um, so it's double needle four thread um, and it's actually rather inexpensive. So I just checked the Brother site, the USA Brother site, and this machine, actually, they still have it for sale on their site um, for $219.99. So that's a, that's a pretty good price. So this is the Brother 1034D. Now they have an updated version of this um, machine, and I'm not exactly sure what the differences are. You might get a couple extra feet. Um, and actually, I've had this machine for so long, I'm, I probably have misplaced the other feet. Um, this one here is the only one I've actually ever used. I wish I could find the other one because they had a they have a uh, tape feeder foot, which would actually come in handy when you're applying um, elastics, as long as you're not. I think the the space is a quarter inch or three eighths, so you could actually apply your elastic that way. So um, if you're sewing a knit, you really need a, a serger because it sews the seam and it also allows that seam to stretch. And I know there's gonna be back and forth and I'm gonna probably get some hate for, um, you know, saying that you have to have a serger to sew a knit. Well, you don't have to, but it's actually a pretty good idea. And if you're gonna be doing any kind of retail or selling direct to customer, you really wanna be using the right machines. Um, um, so I'm not sure else what I can tell you about this machine aside from going into what your the setup is and all of my knobs here have been messed up because I kind of cleaned it out. I actually took this apart. I took the bottom apart and the side apart and I actually got rid of all of the uh, extra um, lint that was inside here. I'll just open this up a little bit. So um, I always keep it threaded like this. So if I'm going to change out thread, I always clip it here, tie the new thread on and then pull the thread through. Um, uh, the side of this has um, knobs to change your length, to change the differential feed, um, to use the knife or to not use the knife. Um, that will come in handy if you're actually going to be doing a rolled hem um, or a narrowed hem. Um, so uh, it has actually quite a few functions. I've been really, really happy with it. I was actually thinking about buying another one um, so it looked a little bit nicer when I do the videos, but you see such a small part of the machine that I just decided to clean it up and um, put a little oil in it as well. Um, so if you're going to be sewing knits, especially if you're doing swimwear um, or any type of really stretchy knit that maybe has a synthetic fiber in it like Elastane or brand names Lycra and Spandex, you're going to really be wanting to use this type of machine. It just makes a really nice seam once you get used to learning how to use a serger. So this is the most important machine that I use in the sewing. So the secondary machine is this machine over here, and it's a little bit more expensive than what I would suggest a beginner purchase, although I did just check the prices for this and they've actually come down, which is a surprise. 
So um, this is uh, the Brother SE 625, and it's actually sewing and embroidery machine. What does it say here in the front? Um, embroidery and sewing, yeah. So this is an electronic um, machine. It has an LCD display. I don't have it plugged in, but it's actually a color display and it's really nice. Now, the reason I actually bought this right after I moved out to the South, um, and the reason I did is because my other machine started only sewing backwards. It wouldn't sew forward. And um, I was teaching, for those of you who know my history, I was teaching in California. I was teaching fashion courses. Um, I've taught in California for almost over 10 years. So, um, and I lost my job. So I ended up moving out to where my family, to be closer to my family. So, um, and just before then, my other uh, brother sewing machine, which was an SE400, um, which is, I don't think it's any no longer available. I didn't see it on the brother site and I didn't actually see it for sale on Amazon either. So that was a really good machine. It also had the um, option to do embroidery as well. Um, this I think is just kind of a step up or a couple steps up or replacement mach machine. I'm not exactly sure. I'm sure somebody else out there might know if it's the replacement machine machine for that. But anyway, the SE400 started sewing backwards. And um, because I was teaching, I knew really very well qualified um, machine repair people. Um, I was very well connected in LA and um, also been in the fashion industry for a long time there that I knew a lot of people and they had a look at it. And um, one guy kept it for a few days and he said he tinkered around with it for a long time, but he couldn't get the mechanism to actually stay in the right spot for it to sew red normally. So I was like, well, I guess I'm just gonna have to buy another machine. I was kind of bummed, um, but cause I didn't need another machine. Uh, also, I should mention that I actually don't need these machines because I have all industrial machines and I brought them all out to the South with me. So, um, and maybe I'll do a short little video about that um, towards the end of this one. Um, so uh, I decided that I would wait until after I moved to purchase a, another sewing machine. There are a couple reasons why, I, even though I have industrial machines, why I need a regular home machine. First of all, I don't have an industrial buttonhole maker. And if I ever wanted to make clothes, shirts, or also I do the buttonhole openings for the drawstrings on the swimwear, I need a buttonhole um, feature. So I wanted to make sure that I had a buttonhole. Um, I also um, understand that, you know, not a lot of people out there can afford expensive machines. And I, even though I have a industrial cover, cover stitch machine, and I also have a home cover stitch machine, um, which I'll show you in just a few minutes. Um, I want to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to, to use the type of machines that I do to be able to produce, um, clothing for themselves, swimwear, underwear, or the patterns that they're buying um, with the same machines that I, that I use. Um, so I use this for the zigzag stitch that I use for applying the elastics and the top stitching. So that's another reason that I hadn't wanted a sewing machine. Um, now also previously with the SE400, I also dabbled in the embroidery um, function. I even brought some, bought some embroidery designs and I have a background in working for silkscreen and embroidery companies and also um, working in many tailor shops and department stores. They had an embroidery machine and we did monogramming and things like that. So I kind of knew what I was doing with the embroidery. So I wanted, thought I would buy, make sure that I had something that could um, also do embroidery. And what I found is that I'm actually tinkering with the embroidery a lot more. I actually have bought embroidery software and I'm gonna be designing some freestanding lace earrings and um, uh, Christmas ornaments. So um, just stay tuned, look at for the fall. I might have some jewelry on another site that you might want to purchase or even teach you online how I'm doing it. So um, I also like the look of this machine, it's really sleek. Um, it has a lot of different stitches in here. You can't see like on a lot of machines, they have the list of all the stitches or the monogramming stitches that they have. Um, this one doesn't have it. It's all inside the computer here and you just kind of, there's a booklet they give you. So there's a lot of different monogramming letters, um, which is, which is really nice. Um, so I will say that it did take me a little reading of the instructions to actually understand how to get to that point. Um, so I'm not actually gonna talk about how to do 
the embroidery on the machine. There's a big attachment that you put here on the front. Um, maybe I'll do um, another video um, for that on the other side of my Robert Joseph sewing channel. So um, this machine, again, it's the SE625, um, and I actually really like it a lot. It has variable speed. I can change the speed up here, um, and it has automatic thread cutting, which I really love. And when I was doing tailoring um, for the department stores, our industrial machines automatically cut the thread for us, and that's like huge. I, my machine doesn't do that. Um, so I really like this machine. It's actually also pretty quiet. Um, that's one thing I didn't mention about this machine. <laughs> it is a little bit loud. It seems a little bit clunky, but this thing is a workhorse. I just want you to know that this is a good buy. Um, and so um, getting back to the straight stitch machine or the regular home sewing machine, um, I really like this machine. And this is the machine that I use. Now I went online to look for the price of this one and it's actually less than what I purchased it for. I think I had a coupon. Um, and I think I paid about 350 for this one. Um, so I think 350 is actually a pretty good price for um, a sewing machine of this caliber, especially with the embroidery. If you treat it right, if you follow the instructions, it should actually last you a pretty, pretty long time. Um, so if you're looking at buying two machines, you know, these two would be great. Um, it, they give you a lot of options. So um, $219.99 or actually $220 plus um, right now $302 on Amazon for this one, that's $520 for two machines. Um, and that's really all you would need. It sounds like a lot of money, but I'm a member of a couple of different sewing Facebook groups and um, people are always asking about suggestions for machines. And it seems about the common amount of money that people are looking to spend for a new sewing machine alone is between four and five hundred dollars so um, you know you can get two two great machines um, with that amount of money now again this one the brother 1034 D is listed on the brother site for two hundred nineteen dollars and ninety nine cents this machine is listed on Amazon for 302 um, and let me see, this is May 11th, so we're actually, you know, I want to date this so you know what date it was. Um, so um, I think there are two great buys. I know there have been some comments that I'm using machines that not everybody has. You, of course, don't need an expensive machine. You can use that, you know, if you have an older machine that weighs a ton, where it only does this, the straight stitch and the zigzag stitch, um, you know, you can make your own opening by making a really small zigzag stitch um, or just a box stitch around where your drawstring opening is going to be. Um, this one, however, I know some people have said um, you don't need a serger overlock to sew your knits but I'm telling you if you're actually wearing your swimsuits your bikinis out on the beach and you are using a zigzag stitch those stitches are probably going to pop if you're going to be doing anything rigorous um, like walk running down the beach or jumping in the water things like that your seams might pop um, however you know come to think about it I may do a video um, um, to show you the difference of seams, one with the overlock and one with zigzag stitch. And if you don't have the money to buy a, a serger right now, what the best zigzag stitch to use to actually make those seams if you're really wanting to make something. Um, so it also depends on the knit that you're using. So these are two of the, predominantly the two machines that I use. Now, I would like to um, address the cover stitch. So I'm going to move this machine out of the way a little bit. And I'm gonna bring this cover stitch machine up. Okay, oh, this is getting in. Okay, so this is the cover home cover stitch machine that I have. It is the Cover Stitch Pro, Janome Cover Stitch Pro 1000 CPX. So when I bought this machine, um, move this out a little bit more. When I bought this machine, it was fairly new to the market and you had to buy it at a sewing center. You couldn't order it online at the time. So um, this is actually a really great machine. What I like about it um, is this big opening area for, you know, you have a lot of space here for putting your fabric in there. And I was about to start a t-shirt line, t-shirt and tank, tank top line, and I needed to be able to do a finished hem. Um, so this machine, I didn't actually check the Janome side, but I did 
check Amazon and um, this machine, the 1000 is running 599. There is a, a lower version of this called the 900 CPX and that sells for 499. The difference between the two machines is that this machine has three needles. You can put three needles, up to three needles in um, for that type of cover stitch. Um, the 900 only allows you to put two needles in. Um, for, so that means that I believe you're, you're, you're constrained to the, the width of the two stitches. I think it's about three eighths of an inch or five sixteenths, something like that. Um, so uh, in here I can have the needles, you know, an eighth of a way. In the industry we call that gauge for the width of the stitches. So I can have three needles here. Um, and of course both machines, if you just use one needle, it will do a chain stitch, which also would work if you're sewing knits together and you don't have an overlock machine. Um, but there are ways to actually sew, the way you have to sew it a little bit different. Um, so I don't, I choose not to use this in the videos because I feel a little guilty that not everybody will be able to uh, afford a cover stitch machine and use a cover stitch. Um, so, and I believe I say in the videos that if you have a cover stitch, that anywhere I use a zigzag stitch, um, you can use your cover stitch for that. So I know some people have said that the zigzag stitch is really ugly, it doesn't look really commercial. And I would like to say to some of the naysayers that if you look at really high end, especially high end women's swimwear, you will actually see a three step zigzag stitch used for the um, elastic application. So um, it holds much better um, and they're using really high quality fabrics and the stitches is actually nicer. So the cover stitch is usually for, used for like really sporty apparel um, and so and also mid, pre, mid price range swimwear, things like that. Um, so it's not a bad machine. I'm not saying that, you know, this isn't used for high end as well, because in some cases it is. I just want to kind of, you know, let those people who say, you know, you shouldn't use a zigzag stitch because it looks ugly. Well, you know, ugly is, you know, I don't really know the definition of that. So um, it's just personal preference. So, but I don't use this in my videos because I don't want anybody to feel like, well, I can't make that because I can't afford that machine. And so that's why I opt for the zigzag. And it's also one of the things that I opt for lower priced sewing machines in the videos because I don't want anyone to feel intimidated by the machines that I use. Um, so, and on that note, let me bring out um, another machine that I want to talk to you about. Um, and I'm running out of space here. So I, I want to bring out this machine. So at the beginning of um, this video, I mentioned that I was going to be starting a sewing school here in my house. And I was actually looking for a machine that was inexpensive enough for me to purchase, um, but also in the price range uh, that, you know, some of the students might be able to purchase themselves. Um, so this machine um, is, uh, one of the limited edition project runway machine. The number is CS5055PRW and it's actually still available on the Brother site uh, for $139.99. Now um, this machine of course is not, um, it's not as, it's really not comparable to the SE 625 because the 625 does embroidery. This is just a sewing machine. However, I feel like this is a pretty good quality machine. I have read reviews on it that it's iffy back and forth, three or four stars. But you know, I started using this machine and I think that, um, you know, I had to, re I read the instructions for this one as well. Even with all of my experience, whenever I buy a new machine or testing something out, um, I really read the instructions. Now I know there are going to be some people who say, oh, this brand has one um, that is really great for students, you know, or this brand has another great one for students, but they're all in the three or $400 range. And I respect that. I respect that there are differences. People think that, you know, if you're opening up a business, you need to purchase, you know, what they call a good quality machine and price doesn't always get you quality. Um, I wanted something that also my students might be able to afford that I also felt was a fairly decent quality. And also I wanted to look for a brand that was also serviceable in my area. Again, I live in a small um, community and the nearest service center is about a half hour away. 
So I wanted to make sure that they were a brother service center. Um, so I'm, again, brother works pretty well for me. So what I like about this machine, again, when I'm looking for a machine, especially for a beginner, my suggestion is um, look for one that has pretty good reviews. Um, if Look at your price range first. If you can afford three or four hundred dollars, then great. Then, you know, you can afford a different brand or uh, a more robust machine. Um, this machine, what I was looking at, I needed the one step buttonhole. And this has an attachment, a special foot, and then you um, dial down here with this little computer screen, and it has one, two, three, four, five different types of buttonholes to choose from. You put the button that you're gonna use in the back of the foot, and then you basically set it up and you hit go. You hit the presser foot, and it makes the button for you. You don't have to do anything. Um, so that's one of the things that I look for. Um, and then I also look for a good quality bobbin winder, make sure that it won't break. And this one is actually pretty good. Um, I'm also looking at, now Brother has all drop-in bobbins. I didn't mention this in the other, um, when I was talking about the SC25, 625. Um, but I like the drop of bobbins and I like to make sure that for this one, that it's a plastic bobbin. So. If the inside, so, and I'll try to explain that. There are some companies that this is metal in here, um, but the plastic bobbins and the drop-ins seem to work better than the metal bobbins. Of course, it depends on the brand and how they have it set up for you. Um, now, there are some companies, I don't understand why they give you a metal bobbin case. And those of you who have the bobbin cases, like an industrial machine, um, the company will make plastic bobbins for and I never really understood that. If you have a metal bobbin casing, then you should have a metal bobbin. So that just to me was weird. And I had one of those machines and I didn't, I always had problems with it. Um, but I think for a beginner, this is a really great machine. I've sewed on it. Now I will say that it's not, it's really light. Um, it's much lighter than the SE625. It's pretty light. So if you're gonna be sewing at fast speeds, it does tend to wobble a little bit. Um, but for a beginner machine, this is a great price and it's a great um, little beginner machine and it has a lot of different stitches. Um, so, you know, it's really how you use the machine. So when you're looking to first buy a machine, decide what your dollar amount is. And then after you've decided the dollar amount, really decide what type of sewing you're gonna be doing and the types of things that you're gonna be wanting to make. Um, because the types of fabric you're gonna be using in the machine will actually tell you um, how to go about selecting the type of machine that you want. Do you need something that's a little bit heavier that doesn't wobble? If you're gonna be using uh, medium to lightweight fabrics, um, this machine would probably be great, but if you're gonna be doing, say, sewing on a lot of twills and denims and making um, heavier handbags or things like that, you're gonna want a heavier machine um, that it doesn't do easy wobbling. Like this one. Um, however, um, this is the machine that I was going to be using in my classrooms um, because it was within my price budget, but it also would be in the price budget of um, the students that would be coming here that wanted to purchase a machine. My suggestion when you're just learning to sew, deciding you want to learn to sew, you know, if you're going to go out and spend six hundred to eight hundred dollars on a sewing machine when you haven't even learned how to sew yet you're actually locking yourself into being out that money if you decide sewing isn't your thing so it's much better to go with a lower priced um, and use that for a few years and save up to buy a higher priced um, more quality machine once you decide sewing is the thing that you want to do for the rest of your life right you can't always um, sell your expensive machine for the price that you want um, so i'm suggesting this machine again it's the cs5055 prw and on the brother site it's selling for 139.99 um, i couldn't find it on amazon and again i just want to mention after talking to these machines i don't get paid by these companies this is a one-man show um, i i don't get any kind of um, fee for touting any of their products although a brother wants to contact contact me, they're welcome to contact me about doing doing so. I've actually had really good luck with the Brother machines. 
Um, in fact, I will just kind of mention one more thing that Brother has a new cover stitch machine out there too. Um, one, they look similar to the Janome, um, but they're rather expensive. The one that's out now that you can purchase on their site or on Amazon runs about $6.99. It's a three needle, um, just like this Janome. And they have a newer one, but it's not available to purchase online yet. And I, but I think that one runs about eight or nine hundred. I wish they would make it available in America. Here, I know it's available in Canada, but um, I probably wouldn't buy it. But I would love. To, I want to go see it um, uh, once we're able to go back into the stores. I might just go check it out um, because it does a top, uh, the top um, cover stitch as well. So uh, again, just to really recap here. Um, this is the serger that I use in the videos. Um, it's the Brother 1034D. Um, it's listed on the Brother um, a USA site for $219.99. And then this machine here is the other machine that I use, and it's the Brother SC625. And on Amazon, it's listed as 302. Um, so it's a great uh, combination and if you have a cover stitch machine then you can you're ready to go into business so I want to thank you for stopping by today and listening to all about the machines that I use um, and you know if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet Robert Joseph sewing um, please hit the subscribe button and and you'll get all the updates for whenever I list a new video here have a great day and be well